This ended up being a kind of an impromptu podcast. Um, some of my most downloadable, I think I said that word right, podcasts are the Q&A stuff where I kind of shed some light on treatment, marketing, all sorts of things. And today, I was in the middle of doing a coaching call with one of my clients that's training in the peak method. And she asked me a really good question about instrument-based soft tissue treatments. And we started talking more about this and I was like, you know what, how about we record this and share this with everyone else in the soft tissue revolution because I do get a lot of questions like this. So in this episode, you're gonna hear a conversation with one of my coaching clients, her name is Ari. She's been training in the peak method for about two months now. And she asked a really good question about instrument treatment, when to use it, how to use it, um, contraindications for it. And I really just gave some insight on that and then she even added in in the end, a uh, little bit of her own successes and what she's learned so far being a peak method trained practitioner. Uh, I apologize in advance for the audio quality. Um, we were doing it on Zoom and it's not the best that we've had, but definitely gets the gist of what's going on. So I hope you enjoy the show. All right, we're recording. So I have Ari here. Ari's in, um, where are you again? In like Boston area? Massachusetts. Yeah, and you've been coaching with me for a couple of weeks now. And we were talking earlier and you said you had a good question that you wanted to ask me. And I thought it'd be a good thing to share on the podcast with other people. So go ahead and ask me that question we talked about. Yeah, sure. I wanted to ask you about instruments, um, soft tissue instruments. What is your thought on them? Yeah, really good question. I made a detailed video about this uh in the facebook group probably last year or so um but it's really good to go in there as well so one thing that i always look at so if we kind of look back at like the evolution of instruments like the first thing that really came out was graston right everybody kind of knew what graston was and graston was like really cool when it came out 25 years ago it was kind of revolutionary where it is but what happened was people were trying to make sure that they use, they wanted to use the instrument for everything. And that's what happens a lot with people is it's like, they want to be like hammer and nail all the time. But what you really got to be is like a Swiss army knife in there. So the problem that I see with a lot of instrument treatments are they don't really follow a set of rules. So there's a set of rules for instrument. And this is what my mentor taught me about the rules of an instrument. So a couple of things that you want to see for to know if you can actually use an instrument. One is that the tissue that you're working is less than an inch deep from the surface. So that really narrows down some of the stuff in there from what we see. So that's the first rule. The next one is that there can't be a lot of blood vessels in nerves in the area because instruments gonna damage those blood vessels and those nerves. The next thing that you wanna see is that the tissue actually kind of goes perpendicular so it goes like straight down so it almost has like a a flow where it can drain down like where it goes in there as well um and going in there and doing that so where instruments are really good in areas in the body where i treat instruments and i train people is like probably 25 to 30 percent of the body okay. so the problem with all these instrument treatments are they want to use it everywhere and if it doesn't meet the rules you're actually causing more harm than good. So you see a lot of these instrument techniques and trainings and treatments that are causing a lot of blood damage and a lot of bruising. And then we equate this, we're like, oh, it's bruising, it must be healing. It's like, no, you're actually getting through a lot of unhealthy tissue. So areas where you can use an instrument really well, um, one would be in the ligament in the neck. Um, it's called the nuchal ligament. And basically, that ligament goes from the tip of your skull all the way down to the tip of your ass. And in the middle of your spine, it becomes what's called the inner spinous ligament. And in the low back, it becomes the um, supraspinous ligament. That one's really good because it fits all the rules. It goes perpendicular. It goes straight down. It's less than an inch deep. There's not a lot of blood flow um, or nerves around that, so it's really safe. Another area that can do really well is the fascia in the low back, um, specifically in the thoracolumbar fascia and the dorsal fascia as well. Um, 
in the erector spinae aponeurosis. Look at me trying to pretend like I'm really smart. Um, but that's what you end up seeing in there. But the problem is everyone thinks fascia is like the whole holy grail. If you fix fascia, you can fix everything. Uh, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole right now. Other areas where the instrument does really well is below the elbow, in the medial side of the elbow and the lateral side of the elbow, because it fits those rules. What those rules were again, right? Um, less than an inch deep, tissue goes, perpen uh, goes perpendicular down, and there's not a lot of blood vessels and nerves. Works really good in the palm of the hand as well. Um, other areas that it works really well is going to be into the quads, specifically like the rectus femoris, um, does really well there. Another area it does really well is in the knee, um, in the knee capsule itself, which is really good. And it does really well on the anterior components of the foot, like below the knee. So you got like um, extensor digitorum, extensor hallucis longus, uh, tibialis anterior, and then a little bit of the retinaculum where it goes down into the yep. foot. And it does, instrument treatments do really well on the bottom of the foot as well because it meets all of those criteria. So what happens is people are like, they get kind of lazy with instrument treatment because when you're doing an instrument treatment, I look at an instrument treatment, it's the exact same if you did what I call a pass on a muscle tissue. So you're learning how to do passes, like getting proper depth, getting proper tension, and for when yep. you find an area with scar tissue, decreased compressibility, um, and you're going in there and treating, you do, you're taught to do five, six, seven passes, and that's it. Now, what happens with instrument treatment is people get really haphazard, and they just kind of go in there, like I call it like a blitzkrieg, where they're just like scraping away and not really feeling what it is. And the instrument can be a really useful tool, but you, I also treat an instrument like a scalpel. And that's where people don't realize they're like, if I went in there with a scalpel and I just started cutting away, that would actually cause more damage. So using it just like your hands where each pass and each thing you do is a separate um, pass as you go. So you want to still do seven to 10 on there, but there's a lot of people and the problem with like Grafton and the problem with all these soft tissue instruments is they're like just use it everywhere i remember i went to a grafton seminar and they're like yeah you can use it on the sinuses or you can use it here and i'm like that makes no fucking sense to me like that's yeah. actually causing more problems but what happens is we've gotten ingrained in this society of no pain no gain which is actually really stupid when you think about that so you got people that are like using grafton on the trap on the accessory nerve I'm yeah. in for spinatus and it doesn't fit any of those rules. It's deeper than one inch. There's blood vessels and nerves there. It's not perpendicular and they're getting all these bruising. They're like, yeah, look what I did. I'm like, no, you didn't do shit. All you did was bruise the hell out of those people. So it's like you damage 90% of healthy tissue to maybe get a 10% change. And we tend to like do this, especially as soft tissue practitioners, we buy into the bullshit from our clients where we're yeah. like, oh, it hurts, it must be doing something, or you can go deeper, you can go harder. And it's like, no, not at all. Yeah. That's actually counterproductive. And you've seen that as well as you've kind of gone through my training. So thoughts on all of that? No, I definitely agree. Um, and I'm finding the same when I'm working on clients and using instruments, it's definitely, I feel like it's doing more harm than good, so. <laughs> yeah, and that's the problem is the people- the people, you always have to understand that I talk about biases all the time in life and human nature. Um, and one of the biases that we have is confirmation bias, where we're going to find data to fit whatever we want based off what we do. And that happens in medicine, it happens in politics, it happens in religion. But the other one that we find is called conviction bias, where it's like, I believe in my product yeah. so much that it can fix everything. And then you, you always see that. I, always, I, I made a podcast where we talked about um, watching out for the magic bullet. Like, oh, mm -hmm. this fixes everything. So I got these people that are like, I have this instrument and it fixes everything. It's like, no, it's a conjunction. It's part of your tool belt. But if you're causing bruising, you're causing pain, you're not fixing anything. And you're doing yourself a disservice and the client a disservice as well. Because at the end of the day, you should do no harm. That's the big thing. 
but we've right. been so ingrained, like I keep saying that if it doesn't hurt, we're not doing anything. And yeah. seeing that as you're going through my system and treating people with my method, where it's, a, it's effective, but it's not a painful one. Like we say like a minor hurt, but good. And that's the kind right. of feedback that you're starting to get from people. So um, Absolutely. yeah, so thanks for that question. That was a really good question. I like, I like that too. So just before we close up here, um, you've been kind of going through my coaching and my training for a couple of weeks. Like on the surface, like what would you kind of tell somebody else out there that's like, on the fence about maybe potentially working with me? Like, what have you seen just so far from learning? Yeah, I, I definitely think keeping an open mind um, about different techniques and um, especially with what you, you offer, I'm finding how everything kind of fits into place sequentially and how you have to open up, you know, one thing to get something else to open and kind of work in that kind of a manner. Um, and I'm finding you know, different ways to work, which is what I, I feel like I've hit a rut with massage a little bit. And I feel like I'm not really, you know, helping the people in the way that I want to. So I feel that this switch is definitely necessary for me personally, um, to get more results based and solutions based, you know, evidence and work out there. So that's what I'm finding for myself. Yeah. And I mean, when you first reached out to me, you're like, something that really hit you hard was like the service versus solutions provider yeah. and actually fixing people. And I've been talking to a lot of massage therapists and like explaining to them that there is a new different type of way to actually get in there and figure out what the problem is. And where a lot of people fight me, and even you saw this at first too, where it's like starting by figuring out exactly what's wrong with your client, because you can't fix a problem if you don't know what it is in the first place. And I see right. this all the time with massage therapists where they hide, they're like, well, I'm not allowed to diagnose. So right. I'm not going to bother to do that. It's like, that's bullshit. Like yeah. at the end of the day, you got to figure that out. And even you saw that when you went through my first training, you're like, okay, yeah, I get that. I kind of do that. But then as you've gone back and seen that, you're like, oh, now it makes sense. And like, everything is kind of put together. It's more of a functional approach as opposed to like a symptom-based treatment. And that's what so many people focus on. The client comes in and is like, oh, it hurts in my neck. And you just start working there right away. Right. I'm teaching you to slow down and figure out why that's happening. And nobody does that. They're not like, why does that person have pain in there? What could cause that pain? And that's what you're starting to see as you go there. And you've done great so far. And yeah. it's definitely a paradigm shift and a definitely di different way to look at it. But I think this is the future of massage therapy because there's so many people that are just in a rut and they're stuck going through the motions. And at the end of the day, you want to be taken seriously as a healthcare provider. Yeah. And there's a lot Absolutely. of shitty people in the field that have made that bad for people, but there's a lot of good people out there. And if you're someone listening and you're like, yeah, I want to fix people. I want people to take me serious. I want to get results you know, reach out to us because that's what we're trying to do. And we want to work with those types of people that want to make a change. So thanks for doing the, the question today and, you know, going through everything and um, we're just going to keep going. Thanks so much for listening to the show. If you're a massage therapist and you want to learn more about our new methods that allow you to easily double your income without working any harder or getting burnout, we have some free resources for you. One, join our Facebook group, The Soft Tissue Revolution. Two, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Three, request our free training series. Four, leave us a five-star review and share this podcast with anyone else you know it can help. Links to all our channels and free training are in the show notes.